Hey everybody, it's been a little while. Uh, I had a problem with the uh, stick that was sent me. Um, it was sending me weird input when I was testing it. So I had to troubleshoot it a bit. I found the issue and it was a bad power line on the ribbon cable. It had been um, separated somehow and it, it, these are small enough wires that that's just really hard to spot unless you're specifically looking for it. So anyways, that was the issue. So the result of that is I need to rewire it, which is actually good from an educational perspective because now this video is needed and you get to see um, some process that I probably wouldn't have otherwise shown you. So what we have here is we have a few sticks, we have some ribbon cable, and we have a TNC 3.2. So what we need to do is wire up a stick and its switch to this Teensy. Um, and what these sticks are, are um, there are two potentiometers, one here, one here. Each potentiometer, each pot has three prongs. I'll talk about those in a little bit. When you move the stick, it it moves these potentiometers. And the way it works is you read analog values off the pots. Um, and then the push button is right there. And it's a little arm that comes out, a little post that comes out and like physically pushes the button down. So anyways, for each potentiometer, we have power, ground, and uh, signal. And uh, for the switch, it's just signal and power, or ground and power, however you want to talk about it. The way that we wire this up to the Teensy is, I mean, you're dealing with, with analog and digital pins with voltage and ground. So let me get a, a pointer. Hold on. Oop, my thumb's in the way. So this is ground. There's actually a few ground pins on this Teensy 3.2. Um, if you buy a Teensy 3.2, you're going to get a sheet or a Teensy. You're going to get a sheet like this. I'm sorry the words are reversed because of how my camera's set up, but you get the idea. You get one of these. It tells you where each pin is and what it does. There's a few ground. There's a few ground pins. Um, and there's different voltage pins, and then the rest are just um, analog or digital pins that you can configure how you want in the code. So, looking at it like this, that's ground, and then the one right next to it is digital pin 1, and on the other side, that's voltage 3.3, voltage 3.3 volts, and then signal. Actually, that might be ground, actually. That also might be ground. And then we've got voltage and then analog 8 and analog 9, which I like to use. Um, this might actually be a two-parter, depending on how long it takes. So I'm going to apologize in advance. If you have helping hands, this will be easier for you. I have them, but they're crap, so I don't use them, and I just... I flounder. So forgive me for poor soldering technique if you see it. Please correct me and give me tips. But um, so just to talk about this ribbon cable, this is from an IDE, old fashioned PC IDE cable. I have a ton of it from my, um, my days in my computer graveyard up in the attic. I mean, it's just a legit IDE cable and I cut off what I need it's perfect for this. There are eight wires. Um, yeah. And so this is what he sent me to work on. This is the, um, actually not this stick. This is the stick he sent me, but I was troubleshooting with this one. As you can see, um, this wire is just way too small. One thing with these orbs is you need your ribbon cable to be quite long because it has to reach. I'll show you. You know, your stick is in there. And typically, the way that I mount this stuff is your, oops. 
is you have to run this line like if those are soldered there you have to run this line all the way like if that's the exit point and then around and then the TNCI normally kind of like double-sided tape right there so this cable just needs to be long enough so I like to make it plenty long this one just wasn't going to be long enough and besides it had that broken power line issue so we're going to toss that to the side And what I might do just for the sake of time is show you um, a few examples here and then uh, cut the video because it can take a little while. It can take a little while to solder all this and kind of keep it straight. But what I like to do here is Take two different color markers, uh, typically red and black, but whatever. This is red and purple, I think. And you mark what's going to be power and what's going to be ground. And then the others are just signal. So I kind of lay it out here. So the first two, the first two wires are going to go to this is switch so one two so one of those is ground one of those is power um, or signal actually whatever then the next three will go to this pot and then the last three will go to that pot so um, that means that on this potentiometer that's ground. This middle is the signal line. This is the analog voltage line. And then this one's the power line. So remember that this image is flipped in the video. So when you're looking at this in your hand, it's the opposite of what you see here. Um, so that means that the first two, the first, the first wire is uh, it actually doesn't matter because the way that the switch is, either of the two can be the ground. But I'm just going to say the first one is um, power. So we're going to actually signal. We're going to leave that alone. That means this first one is ground. Because um, I do input pull-up switches. And then that means that the third wire, which goes to the first prong of the first pot, is also ground so I'm gonna just kind of group those and I'm going to color come on marker I'm gonna color them both kind of dark the reason why I do this It's because once I get these things soldered on, it can be really hard to kind of separate them out. So it's good to have them color coded. That means that this third, third wire, fourth wire, goes to the middle prong of the first potentiometer. And it is, it's actually this one. And it is signal, so we're going to leave it blank. Fold it down. That means this last one, this fifth one, is power and we're going to color it red or orange or whatever this is raspberry crayola raspberry and this going on down the line we've got three three wires left that means this next one is ground so it gets purpled or black or whatever you're color choices for color coding and the middle signal I'm going to ignore it and the last one is power it needs to be raspberry so now I have color coded wires and as long as I solder them in the right order I'm good I'm golden um, and you would do 
the same on the flip side, but just obviously reversed. So you would take your markers, you would take your markers and whatever the line is up here, you would duplicate it on these down here so that once you solder them and you go to put them in the teensy, you know what wire goes where. And the way that I like to do it, as I said, when I was outlining the pins here, um, I will take, oh, let's do it like this. That's how I did it last time. So I put, I take all the grounds together and I put them here in the first, the first pin. And then I take the switch signal and I put it here in digital pin one. That's what my TNT code, my sketch is looking at. It's looking at digital pin one. And then I take, um, I take all of the power lines and put it in the wrap them together, which should be th two of them, just two, and I put them all into both of them into three three point three volt rail. This pin here on the TNC, and then these next two are the signals for the analog pins for the potentiometers eight and nine. And my TNC sketch is looking and reading analog pin eight and nine. Um, and then it, it's all wired up, and then you can fire up joy.cpl on your Windows machine or whatever you want to use to test and calibrate, and you can actually see the input and output. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll solder all this, and then I'll either do another video where I kind of talk through it, or I'll just put pics at the end of this video, and then you can see, you can see how it looks when it's all done. Thanks. Have fun. Hey, and I'm back. So I'm done soldering. And just to show how this turned out, so you've got, I don't know if you can see the color as well, but let me get a pointer, hold on. So on the switch, on the switch right here, um, signal ground on this pot, ground, signal, power on this pot, ground, signal, power. And before I soldered, I colored, color coded all my wires, all the grounds. Go here, there's three in there. There's the switch signal. There's potentiometer one signal analog, eight or nine, the other one, eight or nine, and then the voltages for both pots, the power the power rails. So I've plugged this up and tested it. There's a cool HTML5 browser um, tool that I like to use, as well as joy.cpl on Windows 10. Um, Linux is a crapshoot in terms of um, joystick gamepad calibration UI. Um, I don't know about Mac OS. I don't run Mac OS, so you're kind of out of luck there. But I will post in the video description um, a link to the HTML5 tester that I like to use. So this is ready to go. The next video will be me taking a Dremel to this orb, this orb weaver now that this is working and the, the output of the stick is what I want to see in my Teensy testing. Um, yeah, one thing to keep note, if you use similar IDE cabling that I do, once you have this soldered into the TNC, you need to be careful with the stress you place on these wires. Um, and, and at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, I will bend all of this down flush against the TNC and wrap electrical tape around it, the whole thing, to keep it in place. And then I put double-sided foam tape on the back of it and stick it to the side of the orb weaver um, to reduce strain. But it is possible for these wires here to break off of their solder points because the wires are so thin. Um, on my, I don't know the exact thickness because it's not labeled well on the wire, but on my stripper, I use 
the smallest. Oops, get it in picture. I used the smallest right there. The smallest hole, the smallest guide, whatever that is, which is labeled on the stripper as 30 AWG. So it's a tiny little wire. It's at least 30, if not smaller. So if you use similar cabling as I, then be very careful with that. Anyways, um, I'm done with this. As I said, next video will be physically altering the orb weaver with a Dremel very carefully and slowly. Um, and I will show you that if I can figure out how to get it under the camera without throwing um, plastic and metal shards everywhere. Um, that'll be next. And honestly, that's easier. Even though it's a little bit scary, it's, a, it's easier than this. Once you get to this point of having a working, tested and working joystick connected to a teensy, you're golden. It's just altering the orb by cutting and then reassembly. And you're all set. So that'll be next. Um, yeah, hope this helps you.